Welcome back class. I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide and today we will be starting on section number nine of test number four so we will be done with this test and moving even more closer to finishing all the math problems of every single SAT test in this book. So let's just jump right into this. So uh, excuse me, I was about to cough. So, there is the same number of boys and girls on a school bus when it departs from school. At the first stop, four boys get off the bus and nobody gets on. After the first stop, there are twice as many girls as boys on the bus. How many girls are on the bus? Okay, so, the problem is telling us that there are the same number of boys and girls on a school bus when it departs from school. So, there are X boys, let's just call X as the number, and there are X girls. And X boys plus X girls equals the total number of students in the bus. So, after the first bus stop, four boys get off the bus. So that's the number of boys minus four however nobody else gets on so the amount of girls still stays the same which is x so this is now the total number of people on the bus and before you start simplifying this let me um, <laughs> explain it a little bit so now there are twice as many girls as boys on the bus so don't simplify this equation otherwise it'll mean 2x minus 4 which really isn't helping at the moment however the number of girls is equal to two times the number of boys at the moment so x minus 4 which simplifies out to 2x minus 8 this is equal to x. So, let's subtract 2x on both sides. So, we'll get um, an minus x is equal to minus 8. And we turn these into positives, and we get x is equal to 8. So, there are 8 girls on the bus. That is choice number C. So, let, moving on to number two which has a whole bunch of graphs um... I can't move this, there we go Okay. so which of the following is the graph of a linear function with a negative slope and a positive y-intercept okay so here number two let's just draw this big graph over here we don't have to number it or anything, just give origin, x-axis, and the y-axis. And let's use different colors for different lines. So, choice A looks like this. Uh huh. Choice B looks like this, sort of. Not slanted, exactly. Um, choice C looks like this. I shouldn't actually be using red for that. Let's use let's use white. So a, a color that isn't used much in these videos. Okay. Um yellow for D which goes over here. And uh let's see. Pink for E and this goes down the origin like so all right so which of the following is a graph of a linear function with a negative slope and a positive y intercept so it has to be a negative slope so it has to slant downwards for it to have a negative slope because it has to go one down basically so minus one y so from that we can see that 
A is not a negative slope, it's a positive slope because it slants upwards. So does B as it slants upwards. So we're left with C, D, and E, which is pretty good. Now, the next condition is they ha it has to have a positive y-intercept. So let's see, choice C has a negative y-intercept, so that's not it. Choice D looks completely fine. It has a positive y-intercept. Choice E, however, has its intercept at the origin so, origin, so that doesn't count. This choice D is the correct answer. So now we'll go to number three. And this is a chart. So we're going to be referring to this chart for two questions, I believe. So number of donuts and then total total price and then we extend this to contain our choices so there is just one donut which costs dollar forty cents not a dollar forty cents just forty cents point four dollars box of six costs a dollar eighty nine and a box of twelve or dozen costs dollar three fifty nine okay so number three is so actually three doesn't start over here three starts over here so of the following which is the closest approximation of the cost per donut when one purchases a box of six. So the cost to buy six donuts, that's called donuts is D, is equal to 1.89. So one donut will be equal to 1.89 divided by six. So like this. And now, what we let's just solve this a little bit. We don't need to solve it the entire ways. So that's zero and nine. One goes like this. Goes three, so on and so forth. So here is where the decimal point is. So point thirty approximately times 6 equals approximately 1.89 and that is choice B so 6 times 0.30 is equal to about 1.80 alright or 1.89 but that's the approximation basically so you don't have to worry too much about that so number 4 I'll do it right here since it involves the same table what would be the least amount of money needed to purchase exactly 21 donuts. So we can see pretty clearly that the more donuts you buy at one point, the lower the average cost of a single donut goes. So we need to start picking out the boxes of donuts that have the most amount, then go on to the lower choices. So let's start with a box of 12 donuts this will be equal to dollar three and fifty nine cents now if we take another box of 12 that would be 24 and our goal is exactly 21 mine so it's not gonna work so now let's move on to boxes of six a box of six will be equal to a dollar eighty nine cents and now if we take another box of six it still will go over the total so we're gonna start taking one donut so three boxes of one donut will be equal to zero point four zero times three is a dollar and twenty cents okay so let's add all of that up so twelve 12, 1 times 12, so basically these are all just 1's. 1 times 12 is 12, 1 times 6 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, so 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 plus 12 
is 21. So we have 21 donuts, and now we just need to add up the dollars. So 9 plus 9 is 18, carry over the 1, 13, 15, 16, carry over the 1 again, 3, 4, 5, add the extra 1, 6, 68. And that is the least amount you need to pay for 21 donuts. And that's choice B. So now we're gonna be drawing a graph. Nice. So one that's actually labeled, so it'll take a bit longer depending on whether I mess up or not mess up. So two, four, six, minus two, minus four, uh, I can do that better, four, uh, minus six, and then up it goes also to two, four, six, and down to two, minus two, minus four, minus six. Okay. That's just the graph, and now the line, it starts from somewhere over here, kind of, huh, this is going to be a bit weird, so like that, and then goes somewhere there, and then rises back up again. Alright, so... The figure above shows the graph of the function h. Which of the following is closest to h of 5? So, another function review. This is how a function works in a graph. So, f of x. The x is equal to the x value. And f of x is equal to the y value. So they gave us an x value of 5. 5 is somewhere around here. So now we need to find the y corresponding y value. So let's just go up like this. So it's somewhere over here. Which is approximately between 2 and 4. So that's equal to 3. And f, or rather h of 5, is closest to three, which is choice C. And, uh, hmm. I think I'll do another problem. Last problem for the day. Number six. So we got a Y looking thing. This is four X degrees. This is three X degrees. And this is two X degrees. So, in the figure above, three line segments meet at a point to form three angles. Then what is the value of x? So, in, in, if you have noticed, these all revolve around a point right here. So, all of these equal to 360 degrees. You can basically draw a circle from each edge, and it's obvious that mine isn't really looking like a circle, but uh, it's just because there isn't enough room. But the angles of a circle is equal to 360 degrees. So 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 2 is 9. So 9x degrees is equal to 360 degrees. So x is equal, x degrees rather, is equal to 960 divided, uh, sorry, <laughs> 360 divided by 9. 36 divided by 9 is 4, add a 0 at the end, so 40 degrees. And so the value of x is just 40, which is choice C. So um, I will be seeing you in the next video where we will be continuing on finishing this test and I hope this helped you with your preparation. Take care.